Hey guys, we are in the Geochemistry Lecture Series and this will be lecture number 3. And the topic of discussion is the geochemical differentiation and the book which I referred is the principles of geochemistry by Mason and Moore. Welcome to my channel Success Guru and myself Panchanatham and let's get into the heading. The geochemical differentiation. The geochemist is mainly concerned with the surface of the earth since it is the only part accessible to direct examination. The general picture of nickel iron core, a mantle largely of magnesium iron silicate and a crust with oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron, calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium are the major constituents give a consistent interpretation of information gleaned from many independent sources like the study of meteorites, the physics and chemistry of the earth, seismology data and so on. We can therefore accept such a picture as a working hypothesis, realizing always that it is a hypothesis, but a well betrayed one. The geochemical evidence supports the idea that its internal structure is probably the result of force originating within the earth itself. The earth is a system with considerable mass and thus exert a gravitational force on its own component. The resulting gravitational field as an effect the distribution of material by concentrating the heavier phase towards the center and the lighter towards the surface. The geo Goldsmith term this as primary geochemical differentiation. So this is the very first uh, stage in the origin of earth as you know due to gravitational force the heavier portion will be moving towards the center one and the lighter one moves away from the center right. By this way the minerals has been differentiated and such a kind of differentiation is termed as the primary geochemical differentiation and the fate of an element in this primary geochemical differentiation is a result of number and arrangement of its orbital electron thus element forming ions with a noble gas structure went into circuit phase the transition element on the other hand concentrate in the metallic core or in the sulfide phase the separation of crust, mantle and core enable us to con uh, consider the outer part of the earth as a distinct physico-chemical system. Since the asthenosphere is partly molten, it may chemically interact with the layer above it, especially at convergent as well as at divergent boundary. As you know in the divergent boundary, the new material is raised up in the mid-oceanic ridge and that has been added to the earth surface. And in the convergent boundary, as you know, due to subduction, the previously formed uh, oceanic crust has been subducted uh, beneath the layers of the uh, lithosphere, and that will be mobilized and recycled towards the earth, uh, ma upper mantle of the earth surface. Right? The migration of material within the crust and upper mantle can be discussed as an independent phenomena. It's a partly mechanical, brought about by orogenic movement or gravitational forces and partly chemical. The mechanical moment belongs to the field of geology and the geochemist is concerned with the migration of element under the influence of physico-chemical forces. So you can see in the left side uh, flowchart you can see the migration of elements right. So this is the upper mantle, this is the lower mantle and this is the crust, hydrosphere and atmosphere. So the material that is moving from the upper mantle moves or always recycled one whereas the material that is moving from the lower mantle to the crust that is the primary solids and volatiles, right? And if something that is moving from the crust towards the upper mantle, that is called as burial, this will take place in terms of metamorphism and this process will be take place in terms of uh, igneous, uh, igneous rock, formation of igneous rock, right? And there are also some material that is loosed uh, from the atmosphere, that is the hydrogen and helium ions that is lost from the exosphere. So, this migration has been discussed in terms of process of magmatism, that is what we said here, that is the magmatism process. Then there will be sedimentation process that will be acting within this region, right, and the metamorphism. The fate of an element during this uh, magmatic crystallization is primarily a function of its ionic size. A particular element appears in those minerals in a lattice of which it fits most rapidly and with the greatest decrease of free energy. This distribution of the elements by ionic size in this way was described by Goldsmith as a secondary geochemical differentiation. So according to the what do you call the ionic size the elements have been distributed right and this type of distribution is called as the secondary geochemical differentiation according to Goldsmith. 
So the magmatic crystallization also adds important amount of few elements to the atmosphere and hydrosphere, right? So when there is an magmatic eruption or even a formation of igneous rock as basaltic flow or whatever it is, there will be release of gases, right? That is called as volatile. And by this way, the magmatic crystallization also adds important amount of few elements to the atmosphere as well as hydrosphere, right? The process of sedimentation can lead to further degree of geochemical differentiation. As you know, when it is uh, whether the, when weathering is taking place, right? There will be uh, mineral will be dissolved or removed according to its strength. So the quartz, which is more stable, will stay as the sediment, and the elements whichever it is readily soluble that will be removed from the rock, right? By this way, sedimentation can lead to further degree of geochemical differentiation. The temperature and pressure condition at the earth surface that permit the hydrosphere to exist. Providing a chemical environment in which extensive differentiation may take place. As you know, the the primary source of that is the primary key element for the chemical weathering is the water, right? As we had discussed in the previous lectures in geomorphology, the presence of water actually rises the amount of chemical weathering in any rock. So that is what we have mentioned here. The sedimentary and the hydrospheric process provides the mechanism for the major geochemical differentiation process at the comparatively low temperature and the process of ionic sustainable sorry substitution in minerals in much less prominent although still significant co precipitation under a particular set of physicochemical condition is an important factor for the association of certain element in specific type of sediment the geochemical differentiation during sedimentation is governed largely by interrelationship between ionic radius and ionic charges the sedimentation also involves an interaction of hydrosphere and the atmosphere with the lithosphere. Water, carbon dioxide influence the weathering of a rock and mineral and provide the buffering system for the hydrosphere. The process involving living organisms are closely associated with sedimentation but can be considered separately. And these processes are even more closely linked with the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. We have seen uh, how photosynthesis has probably been largely responsible for the presence of composition of the atmosphere and how the balance of dissolved material in the ocean is largely a function of organic life therein. Thus, the biosphere a further geochemical differentiation takes place through the metabolic action of the organisms. So, we have seen different stages of differentiation where the elements have been separated one after the other, right? But here what we will see is the series of changes so far discussed have led to the coal to an increasing degree of geochemical differentiation, right? That is what we had seen from the uh, primary migration that is the separation of heavier to the core and the lighter to the surface. Likewise, different processes are taking place by moving elements from one place to other, right? By this way, differentiation is taking place. This tendency is reversed by metamorphism, right? In general, metamorphism tends towards uniformity of distribution of the elements. So, when you consider metamorphism, as you know, the metamorphism leads to the uh, further metamorphism leads to the rise of pressure and temperature, and that leads to the formation of uh, palingenesis, right? Uh, what do you call that? Uh, Remelting of the rock. By this way, what happens? There will be one second move towards the uh, mantle, right? So here what they are saying is compared with the chemical, uh, they are proving, they are giving evidence like the compared with the chemical diverse of rock type of younger age, the arcane is dominantly made up of nicers of relatively uniformity, probably due to the considerable degree of long continuous metamorphic and metasomatic reaction. So when you are considering the younger rock and older rock, you can see in younger rock, you may be seeing a lots and lots of different types of uh, element that is present but when we are seeing the older rock that is the archaean rock there will be dominantly of nicers of almost uh, uniform composition so that is what they are explaining that metamorphism is the reversal of this type of differentiation so we are concluding that thus the big in the beginning the relative abundance of element were determined by the number and neutron and proton the nucleus and the binding energy this is what we had discussed in the very first lecture right then the process by which the earth was formed led to first separation of element according to their ability to form volatile compounds. The separation of the earth 
into an ionic core and a silicate mantle and a crust resulting in the strong fractionation of the element according to the affinity for metallic iron or for silicates. This fractionation was controlled by the number and arrangement of outer electrons. The next step in the evolution of the earth was the solidification of mantle and crust which leads to the further fractionation and the major controlling factor was the ionic size here. During geological time, considerable fraction of the elements has taken place at the earth's surface as a result of sedimentary process. The fate of an element under this is largely a matter of its ionic potential, the ratio of the ionic size to the ionic charges. So, the absolute abundance of element is conditioned by its nuclear structure. Its abundance in a particular part of the universe or the earth is conditioned by more superficial atomic characteristics such as the number, arrangement and the orbital electron and the size of the atom or ion. The geochemical behavior of the earth elements depends on its individual property under a physicochemical condition at each stage in geochemical cycle. So with this I am concluding this lecture. I might I think that you got clear about this. If you have any doubt, just mention it in the comment section. I will try to clear it in the next upcoming videos. I group my videos according to the category that you can check in my playlist. You can connect with us by mail, Facebook, and Instagram on these other links. You can support us by like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.